Hello and welcome to your next tutorial on C++ and today we're going to be discussing both functions and parameters. Now you might have remembered back in the first tutorial I said that I was going to be treating this series like a college course and that we're going to be building upon what we learn. Now that's very important to take into consideration here because when we learn functions what we're going to be doing is from here on out every piece of code that we make is going to typically be placed into its own function. So we aren't going to always be working everything inside of our main function anymore. We're going to start making other functions, so bear that in mind. So first of all, what is a function? Well, basically what it will allow you to do is to control when a piece of code executes. And you'll see what I mean by the end of this tutorial. So don't worry, it's, it's, nothing, too, it's nothing difficult at all. But anyways, there are two different types of functions that we're going to be dealing with. Uh, functions that do not return a value, so those are void functions, and functions that do return a value. So first of all, let's look at the uh, syntax for creating a function. So I'll just type out function right here. And let's look at the syntax. So the first thing you do is type out the data type. Now, if it does return a value, then the data type you declare your function as will be whatever value you want to have returned. And don't worry, you don't need to know what that means yet. Uh, then, and if there is no data type, if it's... Uh, if it's not going to return a value, then it's going to be void, which is what we're going to work with first. So data type, then name of function, so whatever you want to call it, then some empty parentheses, then some curly braces. And that's it. No semicolon at the end. Now, uh, I, know, I know this is probably going to be the toughest by far tutorial that we're going to be going through. Uh, because there's two things that I have to get out of the way, and that's how to declare your functions and to define your functions. And we're going to be doing this in two different places. You may have seen people make their functions up here. You never do this. The definition, or in other words, basically look at the, our main function here. This is a definition. We have our function here, uh, the name of it, and then all the code that we want to have in there, and that's the definition. We don't want any definitions of our functions to be up here. We only want our definitions to be below because our main function should always be at the top. That is good programming practice. However, if we call any functions inside of our main function uh, and all of our functions are below the main function, then our compiler will not know that it exists. So we have to actually declare them up here, but put the definitions down here. And again, it'll make perfect sense in a, in a bit. So up here, we'll go our function declarations. I, I spell that right. Declarations. And then down here, we'll go function definitions. So the first function I'd like to show you is, let's just have something print on the screen, something very simple. So when creating this function, we have a function that will print a message on the screen, maybe a welcome message. So is that going to be returning a value? No, it, all it's going to do is print something, but it's not going to return a value. So uh, the data type will be a void. Now that's not a data type, but it means there's, it's void of a data type. It's not going to return anything. And what do we want to call it? Welcome message, something like that. Then empty parentheses and a semicolon. Notice I didn't put the brackets there because I don't want to... Because remember, this is where all the code goes in between. Like with our main function, we have this opening bracket and the closing bracket, and all our code gets, goes in between. But we don't want to do that. We don't want to put any code up here. All we're going to do is declare it, and that's all you have to do for declaration. Then for the definition itself, we go down here and we type out pretty much the very same thing. Void welcome message... But this time, instead of putting a semicolon at the end, we put an opening curly brace and a closing curly brace. So as you can see, all we did was pretty much copy and paste up to right before the semicolon. But instead of putting a semicolon here, we'll actually put the actual braces. So all this function is going to do is print something, right? So let's have it say C out. And this is my first... Uh, function. Yay! So I'll click save and let's run this. Oh, it didn't print out. Well, 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 why is that? 
well, you can have as many functions as you, as you want in your application, but the main function is always what's read during runtime. This is that's why it's called your main function. So how so in order to use this function, we have to do what's called calling the function. So how do you call a function? Well, inside your main function, just type the name of the function that you wish to call. If it's a void function, then you don't need to put any data type before it, so you don't have to worry about that. So all you do is type out welcome message and that's it that's calling your function basically you just type in the name of it followed by any parameters and but of course we have no parameters and don't worry we'll learn about those so I'll click save and let's run this now it says this is my first function and that's because when we ran this uh, it came into this little welcome message here and said oh go inside this function and it was down here now let me show you what happens if you didn't declare it up here. So if I comment this out and we didn't declare it first, now let's see what will happen. Oh, we got some build, er build, build errors. And as you can see, it says welcome message identifier not found. And that's because we didn't declare it first. So no, we don't want to do anything here. So that's why we need to declare it first. So as it reads it from top to bottom like a human being would, it's going to run into our little function and be like, okay, now it knows that somewhere down here a welcome message that is void exists. Uh, so we could, we, could, we could just not declare this at all and just put the whole definition up here. But remember, uh, the main function's definition should be at the top. No other function definitions should be above the main function. Now there's some other things I want to point out. Uh, another good programming practice is to put a series of comments below your declaration that kind of defines what it does. The very first thing you do is type out the title, so welcome message, and then kind of type out what it does. Print a welcoming message. Now for void functions, this is typically all you do, and this is very important in you know in the real world because when you have lots of functions that do all these different things, you're going to have to write out these comments right below the declaration of your functions. So when people look at it, they can read what it does and kind of capture what it does really easily. So what about a function that actually returns a value? Should we do something like that? Sure, let's do that. So let's. Uh uh, create another function so let's go up here and let's a actually have a function that will return a value so let's have it return an integer and call it calculate num empty parameters and that's it so this time we'll type out calculate num and uh, it doesn't really do anything calculates I don't know I'll put down multiplies to integers and now this time since we're going to be returning a value we're going to have to add an extra comment for our definition now remember these comments aren't required but if you're in like a college course for example and your professor isn't telling you to do this I recommend you still do this on your own because trust me you you're not gonna you know get a job and then write out declarations for functions and not define what they do with comments these are very integral to your programming practice. Oh, my voice is cracked. For the loss. So, uh, if we have a return value, just type out at return, and then the data type that it's going to return. So it's going to be returning an int. It just matches this right here. Then a dash, then basically define what is it returning. Uh, an integer that is the product of two other integers. I don't know, I'm just making this up. But that's pretty much pretty much what it's gonna do. So let's actually make it down here. So I'm just gonna copy this. And easy, what I do is I usually copy all the way up to right before the semicolon. I'll just copy it and then I'll paste it down here, then an opening curly brace and closing curly brace. Now let's create some two integers. So let's go int x is equal to five and int y is equal to six. But it's also going to have to return the value now. So we'll talk about return. And you, uh, I've, I don't know if I brought this up in C++. Uh, this is bad programming practice. Let me show you. Int total 
is equal to x times y and then return whoops no semicolon is also a bad programming practice too and return total don't do this unless you need to use this total elsewhere but if you but if all you're doing is creating this total and then returning it this is bad program programming practice and the reason for this is because creating another variable uh, requires more memory so we want to be efficient with our memory so don't do this instead just return directly x times y and there you go so now that's perfect so now we need to actually call this function now if the function is actually going to be returning a value then we're going to have to create a variable up here so maybe we can call it int I don't know let's call it int product and we can set that equal to the calling of this function calculate num and there we go so the reason why you have to set it equal to something is because since it's going to be returning the value like here this is a void function but if this function was going to return something well that's like if you just typed 15 right there in a semicolon that doesn't make sense that's that that, that doesn't work it, it, you can't do anything with that it's not actual code so that's why you can't just that's why uh you have to set equal to something make a variable and set it equal to that calling of that function and there's another way you can use functions that return values and that's passing functions as parameters but that's a couple tutorials down the road so don't worry about that so now we're going to want to print this so we can print the product there we go so I'll click save and now let's run this and there you go now we get 30 so we get still get this is my first function and 30 because it uh, created this variable called product which was equal to the calling of this function and whatever this function is returns which is x times y which is 30 it's not going to set product equal to 30 and then it printed product but you don't even have to do it this way instead we could just put out the function right here we could just type it right here instead of creating a whole variable like I showed you before we could just have it say calculate uh, num this way just put it out there directly and let's try it again this is more uh, ways to save memory and see there you go the 30 is still there so that's really really cool oh my goodness this is a long tutorial uh, so you know what I might actually just stop it here and I'll show you about parameters I'm gonna keep this video the way it is Nah, you know what? I'm gonna do a different whole new tutorial okay so this is all I'll show you with this tutorial functions without parameters but uh, but yeah, in the next tutorial I will show you parameters, so I'll see you next time.